who is going to win the final stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup circuit. Previous winner, Joseph Bozanski of Slovakia. Or will it be Miguel Becerra? Well, we've got an interesting gold medal match lineup here in Paris in the compound men's individual competition. Miguel Becerra of Mexico has to win this to guarantee his place at the World Cup final. Joseph Bosanski's already won a stage, so he's already, well, he's probably booked his ticket to Mexico next month. But can he get a second stage win and open up an additional ranking spot? And this is going to be an interesting match because in the semi-finals, uh, Becerra was just shooting really, really well and really convincing, uh, even if the wind was plaguing him. Uh, Bezanski had to kind of grow into the match and uh, towards the end of the match he was shooting better and better but um, he needed some time to get into it so the question is has he uh, just stayed in the in, in the shooting spirit stayed in the competition spirit um, or does he need that moment again Well, the early evidence suggests that uh, Becerra certainly hasn't stepped off the gas. Uh, shot very well. Conditions perhaps a little bit more favourable in terms of uh, less wind. Uh, Bozanski dropping an eight, sandwiching, uh, being sandwiched by two tens. Looks fairly relaxed and comfortable. And it is only one point. It is only, only one point indeed, and they have 12 arrows to uh, you know, decide the course of this match. Uh, What's interesting here to like the difference between the two archers, I feel like um, Becerra, he's like a, a fighter. He just like wants to win matches. Um, if you look at Joseph Bozanski, he's kind of taking the moment in. He's, he's really, um, you know, he, he's nervous, but he's acknowledging that he's nervous and he's dealing with it. Um, in an interview that I watched uh, with him recently, he said, um, I am nervous when I'm on the finals field, but I think all archers are probably pretty much ner going to be nervous on the finals field. Um, but he also believes that the nerves make him sharper, make him more focused. Um, so channeling those those nerves and those, you know, the, the, the spree of hormones that's going through your brain, uh, channeling it into focus is admirable, I think. Yeah, and there's something wrong with you if you're standing on the finals uh, range and you don't feel nervous. But yeah, channeling that adrenaline is um, is clearly a key to having success on the finals range. I think one of the reasons that people like Joseph and, and um, you know also people that haven't met him uh, is that he makes it all very relatable. If you look at him shoot at the finals venue, um, you can kind of relate to uh, being nervous, uh, living the moment, and, and just shooting because you love the sport of archery. One of those uh, wild shots that we've uh, grown accustomed to from uh, Becerra. 
počítaj si. Dobre, 10. This is some form from the Mexican. He's clearly not thinking about uh, relying on a host nation wildcard, Miguel Becerra. He is going after this one in a big way. You have to say that at this stage of the semi-final match, uh, Joseph Pozanski found himself two points down against Jean Pizarro and still went on to win the match by three points. Yeah, the question is, um, will Becerra also start shooting more and more nines as uh, Jean Pizarro did? And I think the answer is no. I think you may well be right from what we've seen in the first two ends. Um, but uh, I suppose trying to put a, a silver lining in the dark cloud that is that two-point gap is that anything's possible. And we've seen it time and time again, yeah. just today. Today, yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, examples today that being in a two-point deficit doesn't mean you have to lose the match. You can still get back into the match. Um, so, yeah, I mean... He's got to start the fight back right now. Yeah, he needs to start shooting 30s and uh, quick. So, Bozanski trailing by two, goes into end number three and will shoot first against a very determined-looking and high-performing Miguel Becerra. I feel like they're... Um, intensities uh, in just in general also kind of transfer to their shooting technique where Joseph Bozanski is kind of like very controlled, very easy and, and almost a, a bit of a soft shot. Um, whereas if you look at Miguel Becerra here, you can see his shot kind of explodes and you can see his bow jump uh, into his hand and in his release hand flies back. So there is like a different style of shooting as well. Um, not only the mental approach is different, but also their shooting. But this is exactly what Joseph did in the last match. Exactly. Gave that some English, as you say. Miguel Becerra. And this is a, a phenomenal turn of form, but it is exactly what we saw in the semi-final. Not just three tens. No, three X's, and that's like to the T exactly what he did in the uh, semi-final. And look at this. Unbelievable scenes. Becerra rattled, I think, by those three X's. Yeah, maybe not even by those three X's, but just by the fact that he's hitting on the right all of a sudden, and he probably wasn't anticipating just suddenly moving group. But, um, yeah, it did. this is just nice to see, isn't it? Yeah, and, and you talked about um, uh, Bozanski giving everyone uh, the feel of uh, 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 being relatable, I think you said, and you certainly see that. Like, they're still fighting in, uh, in uh, Bozanski, still going for it, patting his heart and his, and his uh, Slovakian flag on his chest. And, uh, and that's what it means to him. Isn't there an English saying, uh, wearing your heart on your sleeve, just uh, having everybody see what you're feeling? There is indeed. There is indeed. And that's certainly what we get from the Sarah. There's a few other athletes out there on the line that show their emotions as well, giving us some insight into it. But again, it's about, you, you, we say this all the time, it's, it's about what works for you. Because those archers out there that show little emotion, that's the way that they handle this really intense situation. Yeah, again, like you say, it's, it's very personal. Uh, there's no one best way to do things. You need to um, do something, you need to cater your uh, mental approach to your own mental state and not uh, copy it from others because somebody yes. else will always be different than you are. Zansky starts the fourth as he finished the third with a ten. And Becerra back in the middle. These next five arrows from these archers. Absolutely critical to not only the match here in Paris, but what happens in terms of who qualifies. Who qualifies for the final, and that's another dropped point 
for Miguel Becerra and Bozanski is in the lead. Another perfect, not quite as good as the three X's from the previous end, but he's going to lead after four, having been behind by two after two, and another dropped point from Miguel de Serra. What has happened to the form of the man who shot a 60 through the first two ends? Yeah, it's difficult to say, but uh, <laughs> Bozanski cheering uh, or cheering uh, to the crowd, uh, lifting his uh, bottle. Um, Becerra, I feel like the, the previous end where he just hit that 9.9 .9 on the right, kind of like it just threw him off uh, I feel like he expected that one to be in the middle when he shot another arrow it hit on the right as well and then like he didn't know it was him if it was his equipment um, and obviously again I'm, I'm speculating but I think that's what kind of um, threw a spanner in the works for him well, we see the uh, digital wind meter the wind has been pretty kind to the men here on compound Saturday. But a two-point deficit has turned into a two-point lead for the Slovakian as we go into the fifth and final end. I, I'm, I'm reluctant to, to call it because we've seen so many twists and turns today. Uh, but one thing is for sure, Becerra will shoot first, has the opportunity to put some pressure on his opponent. That's exactly the way to do it. And we have seen in the past that Joseph isn't immune to pressure. He uh, has moments where he will be affected by it. But um, what I like about Joseph is that he won't try to hide that. He, he'll just uh, own it. We've got a little close-up of Miguel Becerra there as he was putting his arrow in. You can actually see his hand shaking with the nerves. This one in his own control. Just a little gust of wind there on Becerra, but he puts it into the 10 to finish with a perfect and a 146, a nine for a second stage win for Bozanski. Oh, he puts it into the 10 for another perfect. And Joseph Bozanski of Slovakia has taken a second stage win of the season here in Paris at the fourth stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup. He'd already booked his spot at the finals in Hermosilio. He sealed it with the win here, but more so opened up a position for qualification through the ranking system. And we believe that it's Sir Sullivan from the USA who will benefit, but Bozanski, the champion of Paris. Quite remarkable in the semi-finals to come back from two points down and a, an arrow that actually was marked as an eight. To do it again in the final, absolutely incredible stuff from him. Yeah, and pretty unique because, uh, especially with the level of shooting uh, over the last couple of years, it's been getting better and better, and the scores have gotten higher and higher, so it's less and less likely uh, that you're going to come back from a two point deficit in a compound match. But he did it twice in a row, so um, I mean, this is just a uh, testament of how well his season has been going. Obviously, he had that uh, first World Cup in Natalia where he walked away with the stage win he wins the european games and now well truly cements his place into the uh, world cup final